Normally, we will begin by saying good morning, so I will start with the good morning and then good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, welcome to the house of the Lord. This is Wesley United Church. You are in the right place, right time to celebrate the birth of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ the Son of living God. We begin with the announcement from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. To us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and uphold it. Nine hundred years later, the angel of the Lord appeared to Mary. Mary, she became pregnant. And in Luke chapter 2, I will read verse 30 to 33. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all people, all peoples, excuse me, a light for revelation to the Gentile and for the glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. Angel, we have heard on high. Number 338.
while you are still standing, shall we turn to call worship. Like the shepherds, we come to this table a setting of what we have heard and see, longing to hear a word of peace and joy. Like the wise ones, we have journeyed to make gift to offer and hope in our hearts. Christ, Christ change for the best. Here, in the stillness of winter's night, we gather to share the light of Christ, a light that shines in the nightfall. We gather in wonder of this night to share our joy and thanks for new life. We, we light the, a candle of hope, hope for ourselves and for God's beloved world. We light a candle of peace in our hearts and on earth. We light the candle of joy, joy to the world and within our whole being. We light a candle of love, the promise of God's love for us and for all creation. And now the hour has come and the season is fulfilled. We light the candle of Christ's candle, the light of the world, the light of possibility. Amen. Together we pray. We praise you, God of love, for you have given us your very self in human guise, your divine majesty born into our mortal humanity, your love laid in a stable where there was no room in the inn. We confess that we too have often not made room for him in our lives. We too have neglected him to the backyard of our priorities. We have named Prince of Peace, but we have slipped time and again into the ways of violence and war. He was named the Lord of Love, yet we have been slow to accept your unconditional love and even slower to love others without condition. God of giving, free us from the little prison of self that we may come more and more to live into the times of great joy. Amen. Peace be with you. Please be seated.
from Genesis chapter 1. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. <clears throat> Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every li living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was an evening, and there was a morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Please stand for O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number one.
second reading is from Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and to the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Please stand for angels from the realm of glory. Hymn 36. The third reading is from Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed, to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you had found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Please stand for Good Christian Friends, Hymn 35.
The fourth reading comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 14. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. We'll now stand to sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, hymn number 48. reading comes from John chapter 1 verses 1 to 15. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him not anything made that was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. 
There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. I know everyone has a favorite hymn. This is my favorite hymn. Do not let me down. <laughs> so that when I give you a comfort of uh, sitting, and if you don't sing properly, I'm going to repeat it again. We're going to be here until midnight. So we go. pass the exam.
brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, a Merry Christmas. I we welcome you to our church again. And if you are visiting for the first time, we are happy to see you. Majority of us will have received a gift or we have uh, given out a gift or you're planning to do so. Contrary to major belief, not every culture, they give and they receive a gift. But there's no exception in life. You have received a gift. You have. Or you have given gift to someone. It's not necessarily a material thing, but it might be something very special. Have you ever given a gift or give a gift to someone until you feel pain? And you will ask me, how is that possible? So it's cold right now out there, it's cold. And you may need a jacket or a layer of warm cloth to keep yourself warm. And you're walking downtown Ottawa or in Toronto or in any major city where we experience winter. And you notice someone sitting on one of the corridors and he or she doesn't have enough warm cloth. And you give one of your jacket. Or you take that person to a nearby restaurant. You offer a cup of hot drink before you take off your hood or your, your hood and you give it to him or give it to her. Or you welcome someone into your house. Or you are in one of those vacation places. And lo and behold, you see someone walking without shoes. And you take off your shoes because it is scorching hot and the sand is very hot. And you offer that person your shoes and you walk bare feet back to your hotel. Or like one of those third world countries, a mother is cooking food for her six kids while they're sitting on the table eating. And the mother, she budgeted the food for the kids for today and probably the leftover will be the breakfast for next morning. But while they, were, they are eating, another family nearby, kids, they show up. And without being invited, they just jump to the table and they eat. And they finish up the food. So you have nothing left for your kids for tomorrow morning breakfast. So you give until you feel pain. Jesus is the perfect gift because he reflects the father who gave him. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. Let me stop right there. For God so loved you. The world is not the planet without humans. It's not the Jupiter. It's not the Mars. It's the earth. Because that we are humans. So for God so loved humans. And he gave his only son. Think about the love of God this Christmas. 
and ask yourself, what am I going to do with the love of Christ that I have received? Think about that. Jesus is the perfect gift because God gave him with the knowledge of our needs. God knew we needed a savior, deliverer, redeemer, healer, and a true friend. Have you become a savior to someone? I'm not talking about dying on the cross because none of us can do that. Only one person died. But I'm talking about saving someone's life. Have you become someone redeemer? You give someone life. Have you ever tried to become someone healer? And the healing, I'm not talking about the doctor because we are not a trained physician here. But there is a spiritual healing that you can provide. Because we have received a healing from God. And the healing we give. Jesus is a true friend. Because our friendship normally will end somewhere along the way. You will have a friendship, friendship with someone. But somewhere there that friendship is going to stop. Trust me whether you believe this or not, but the friendship between you and your friend, someone else, is going to stop. But there is only one friendship that will never stop. And that's the friendship between us and Jesus. Jesus is our gift. What are we going to do with this gift. We go into the mountains. Over the hills. And we share the good news. Therefore. There is. No greater joy. At Christmas. More than fulfilling gift. Than entering into a personal. Relationship with Jesus. Jesus. Friends, I don't want to waste your time this evening. But I want you to think about this. If our greatest need had been information, God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, God would have sent us an economist. If our greatest need had been pleasure, God would have sent us an entertainer. But our greatest need was forgiveness and salvation. So God sent us a savior. Hallelujah. One of the greatest theologians that ever lived, Karl Bath, was asked to be a guest lecturer at the University of Chicago Divinity School. At the end of a captivating closing lecture, the president of the seminary announced that Dr. Bath was not well and was quite tired and thought he that Dr. Bath would like to be open for question. He shouldn't be expecting to handle the strain. Then he said, Therefore, I will ask just one question on behalf of all of us to you, Dr. Carl Bath. He turned to renowned theologian and asked if of all the theological insights you have ever heard, 
which one do you consider to be the greatest of them all? It was the perfect question for a man who had written literally tens of thousand pages of some of the most sophisticated theological theology even put into print. The students held their pencils ready, grabbed their paper, ready to write what Karabath was going to say. Karabath closed his eyes, his tired eyes, and he thought for a minute, and then he half smiled, opened his eyes, and say to those young seminarians, the greatest theological insight that I have ever had is this. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Beloved, right at the heart of Christmas lay the center purpose of God, which made all the difference in the world. Christmas stands for the presence of God with us, Emmanuel. To meet the pressure of life as they come to us day by day, when our hopes crash, dreams collapse, the grace and love of Jesus is designed to relieve and to bring hope to us. So I am praying that this Christmas you will have hope and peace with your family. I'm praying that the lights of the world, Jesus is the light of the world, and he is our living breath sign of immeasurable love that God had for all of us from the very beginning. It is a love that never stops shining Again, may the blessings of our Lord Jesus with his peace, joy, hope, love, and eternal life be your gift this Christmas season. Merry Christmas. We have a special music.
have the offering, please. Generous and loving God, your gift is to us in Christ Jesus still rose us to manger. And open our hearts with wonder. Bless our gifts in this name, in his name, so that they may draw others to your love and the blessings we have found in the Holy One born for us this night. Amen. Loving Father, help us remember the best of Jesus that we may share in the song of the angels, the gladness of the shepherd and the worship of the wise men. Close the door of hate and open the door of love all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift and good desire with every greeting. Deliver us, dear Lord, from evil by the blessings which Christ brings and teach us to be merry with clear hearts. May the Christmas morning make us happy to be your children. And the Christmas evening bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts, forgiving and forgiven. For Jesus' sake, together we say, come to our hearts, dear Lord Jesus, and give us peace, joy, and love. Amen. Together we pray the prayer our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespasses against us and lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We will be singing Silent Night. Please take the small light at the bottom. There is a switch to turn it on. Shall we stand the place?
May you be filled with the wonder of Mary. May the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. The light may come on. You may be seated, please. Tomorrow at 10, we have a service. We will have uh, other congregations. They are coming to join us. Wesley, Calvin, and Zion. The service will be here at 10 o'clock. Please come so that we can celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you. If you're driving, drive safe. May Christ protect you and he take you home safe. Until tomorrow, God bless you all. Can we turn this on quickly, please, if you don't mind? Jonathan, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I want to say thank you. Thank you so very much for being here this evening. And uh, this was just amazing. I want to thank you very much. We wish to have you every Sunday. <laughs> come, come, two of you. Come here. Lyo, come, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The, these young ones 
with the help of uh, the old, old guy here. <laughs> they just make me very happy. And on behalf of all of us, I just want to say, may God protect you, young one, keep you safe, so that you continue to be good people. Good people. And you, may God give you many years. Oh, I hope so. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> many years. Thank you.